Hello everyone, long time no see. So unfortunately I had some pretty intense weeks at work so after 10 to 11 hours working in Clo for so many days in a row. Last thing I want to do on my weekend is open Clo to be honest but I'm finally getting back to normal life. <laughs> So I wanted to restart my tutorial creation process and I would like to start with a very simple tutorial about uh, using two D-rings for fastening something. I mean this can be applied to many things, also belts um, because more or less the principle is the same but this time I will use it uh, for pocket closure fastening pocket fastening I don't even know the correct English word anyway so what I have here is just um, basic shirt a little bit oversized so I want to create a nice uh, rectangular pocket and so I will go through all of the steps of creating the pocket to finishing with the D-ring detail. And yeah, so first I have to decide on the pocket size and position. So I always like to start with creating a rectangle on, on the body pattern and see it in 3D to decide on the size and position. So for the size, I will do maybe 14 times 16 centimeter and decide on the placement. Perhaps looks a little bit too big, so I will make it smaller by one centimeter. And then position maybe like this. Okay, and I will clone it as pattern, sew it, and of course during creation of pocket detail I don't really need to simulate the whole garment, so I'm freezing it. And as you can see very quickly my pocket is created and uh, I will create uh, the position and the shape of the flap. So the flap will be attached one centimeter from the opening of the pocket and usually the flap is a little bit wider than the actual pocket just to cover the opening of it. So I will change the length of this line and I really like this function. I use it quite often so you can change the length um, for both sides and I will add 3 millimeter to each side so the new length will be 13.6 centimeter and then I will also have a 5 millimeter top stitch to sew down um, the flap and I will create the flap how about 5.5 centimeter height nope this a eh. and I will trace it as pattern and I like to use trace as pattern in this case rather than using clone as pattern because when you trace as pattern you get the internal lines transferred as well so that's pretty convenient okay and now I will sew the Black it on top. Superimpose over, bring it out a little bit so they don't fight. Simulate. And as you can see, the flap kind of lifts up. Um, that's pretty normal when you work with high particle distance. So, to avoid that, you can already reduce the particle distance to 10. And also, this additional thickness collision, which creates distance between two pattern pieces. Um, you can also reduce that one is pretty good um, during shape development so as you can see it already comes down and before you add the D-ring fastening or closure um, it's good to decide at this point whether you will want 
um, to make the placket with two layers or will you use like the um, increased thickness rendering and use double sided function here so it really depends which one you prefer I usually prefer to use um, double layer for plackets also depends how much time I have so it's good to add those now because when you will add the D-ring closure then it will be a bit annoying to add it so now it's a good time to make that decision but of course nothing is possible you can always add it afterwards okay so now I will add the ribbon where the D-rings are attached to and first I will split this top line in half create internal line and the width of the ribbon will be 2.5 centimeter so I will move this by 12.5 and copy and paste 25 and position is created okay and I will sew it Here, don't forget to change sewing line type to turned. And superimpose over. And the ribbon is added. I already add the five millimeter. Now I need to create the loop for the D-rings, so I will offset as pattern outline. Uh, I need two offsets, create internal line. And how much space do I need for them? I would say 1.5 centimeter, like this. And I'll fold it, sew it, and I probably need to sew this down as well okay and of course particle distance should be reduced so I will already put it on 5 and 0 0.5 and for any kind of fold I really like to use two lines for fold lines so I offset two millimeter then I move it one millimeter so the fold is in the middle fold angle on 90 switch fold rendering off and nice and smooth fold is created okay and now I can create the D-rings. Uh, first, I will create just a rectangle. So the width of the D-ring, so if my ribbon is 25 millimeter, I would say 32 millimeter, so 16 times 16. So that's the half of the D-ring. And then I will unfold with symmetric editing. And I will place it on arrangement point and change the shape style to flat because I will use it as it is like this. Oh, and also I need to change particle distance to one because it will have round shape, so it's important to reduce that. And also this I will put on 0 0.5. Okay, so I kind of can see the proportion, so I will create um, the shape, just I guess very simple around this as well. I, I do think it can be a little bit higher. Okay, and I will create separate fabric for it and I will also control the um, the thickness of the deering with the thickness of the fabric um, because of course you can use 
the whole additional thickness rendering and all that stuff but lately it's not really behaving well so that's why I rather um, change the thickness using fabric thickness so I will put it 1.5 maybe okay that looks fine now offset as internal line so I will do two millimeter unfortunately from from this position oh you can also convert to whole oh you cannot really from this position you can't really convert it to whole because I guess of the symmetry so you have to remove linked editing is there two why okay so convert to whole and smooth curve again I will smooth this out 1.1 1.1 very specific and also I will change the curvature because I want it to be a little bit more sharp so how about three no four okay it looks pretty good and now I freeze it and I have to place it in a loop but actually the loop is kind of far from the body so uh, from the pocket so what I will do I will pull the loop closer maybe I also should reduce this Yeah, I think it's better. Okay, so now I will put the D ring in the loop. Watch my loop freak out. But that's okay, that happens. Some days it freaks out more than others, so I think I need to change a bit further okay and then copy paste the other one So you need to think about the space here because you have you will have to loop the other ribbon through so um, don't put it like super close because it will not be possible to loop it then so let's see maybe this is probably enough okay looks okay and now I will create the other loop other ribbon yeah so the same process, a uh, uniform split, so I will attach it maybe until here, so 65, move it by 12.5, um, 25, and the length of the loop at the beginning I don't want it to be too long because it will be difficult to manage that so maybe 14 centimeter so 25 times 14 okay 
Now I have to sew it here. Like this. Okay, and superimpose over. Move it away. So it will change fabric. <coughs> Okay, so I think maybe this is a little bit shifted. Um, I will try to move it. And also the D-rings I have to move. Because I don't think they're kind of in, they're not in the middle of the pocket, I think. This one, particle distance on five. This will increase the stability of everything that you're doing. So <laughs> good luck trying this with particle distance 20. Okay. So first step, really bring it very close to the D-rings like this. it behind the D-rings. So first determine um, the area that you need to move and then just move it and hope for the best. Might not be pretty but We'll see. Last time I did the simulation, my claw freaked out, so I'm saving just in case. And seems it didn't really freak out at all. So it looks pretty stable. That's nice. Okay, now I will move this down. Okay, and now the tricky part. So you have to loop it through this. And this is where I think I can move this a little bit closer. And again, determine which line you kind of need to move. So it will be around here. And move it under. Well, this might not be that great. But let's hope for the best again. And again, I will save it. Okay, not too good, not too bad. Uh, that's definitely bad. Okay, we'll pin this down. Uh, this part is freaking out. Okay, so I think this line was not good to select, so I will select a line lower. Maybe I like this line. Mm. Mm. Oh, I'm just going more up. How about this? Oh no! Well, this is the point where my claw died. Okay. So my claw had a moment, or my laptop had a moment, not sure which one is failing me today, but it did crash, so let's try to clean up this mess you know it is it is funny because sometimes it works really well and sometimes it just doesn't want to work 
maybe it's the mode of my laptop or sometimes I really feel like it's a person and it had its it has its bad days okay so this is pretty good like as good as it can get like this type of thing that happens is really annoying me because in general it shouldn't really be happening but um, somehow it does happen and I don't like it but there's not much I can really do about it and you know if you want to be like super extreme you can put this on particle distance too and then you can select like smaller triangles and pull uh, pull those out Th this is a bit annoying work because every time you want to add a pin like close to the pin that you already added it like removes it i don't know how that makes sense but that's how they have made it I usually before like rendering I usually do this I just pull it out um, where it's going through just so that in the render it looks fine okay not that bad you see it wasn't difficult at all and then the last step you can do make this thing longer what is happening Mm. Oh, it's the other maybe like this but make sure to check this sewing and simulate not too bad mm. yeah this stuff needs to be pinned down not the most stable thing you will ever see in your life, but it's nice. It's nice detail, I think, if you have patience. And then the best part is that you can, well, before you do that, remove linked editing from the second layer because you cannot um, com uh, copy with Control D if there is um, layer layer link between these two okay and then whenever I have a symmetric simulation and I have created already like perfect uh, how to say pocket simulation that I don't really want to be uh, moved I usually um, freeze the pocket and then freeze the body and then I make the body adjust to the pocket of course if you want to see how the pocket will um, affect the body pattern like it will maybe drag it a little bit down because of the weight this is not the way to go but for visualization it's a um, super easy way and let's see how it looks together I think it looks pretty good and then I can change it to metal yeah and that's pretty much it I hope this was useful tutorial or workflow video and you can create things with this really nice deering detail now Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.